Hey guys, it's Casey. Welcome to Reviews Day Tuesday, where I review books I've recently read and liked, and hopefully recommend some books for those of you who like to read. Today's pick is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lengel. What I'm holding right now is the 50th anniversary edition, so it's a fairly old book, but it won the John Newberry Medal in 1962 for being a distinguished contribution to children's literature. This book wasn't what I was expecting at all. I was expecting a kid's book that kind of, you know, touched on time travel and fantasy, and what I got was so much more than that. This is a really good book if you're interested in science fiction, if you're interested in science at all, if you're interested in magic or witches, it's got all of that. The book starts off with Meg Murray and her family who are totally normal people. Her father's been missing for a really long time, so the family's kind of in this state of limbo waiting for him to get home or to hear from him. And the youngest child, Charles Wallace, um, everyone thinks he's stupid, but he's actually intelligent and, and articulate, and he's kind of strange. And he brings home these friends who are kind of like witches. And these strange old ladies take three kids, Meg, Charles Wallace, and their neighbor Calvin, on an adventure to try and find Meg's father. But it's not your average adventure plus magic book because it uses science to explain the intricacies of things like time travel. It talks about the fifth dimension theory about folding space and time and uses logic and science to explain things like the Tesseract, which before this book I had never heard of outside of a Marvel movie. Because of course in the Thor movie franchise, the Tesseract is what bends time to open a doorway between two different points in space. So that's basically the premise of this book as well, is that there's this thing called the Tesseract and you can use it to bend time in order to change your location in time and space. This book was so cool I could not put it down. I finished it in almost a single day, not because it was a simple read, but because it was just so interesting and I was like, wow, I want to know what happens next, you know? This book has been criticized for being both too religious by science groups and not religious enough by Christian groups. The thing is, this book incorporates the idea of having a higher power with the idea of scientific explanations for everything. It is um, this wonderful contradiction of, of faith and science and power, and it, it's a story of good trumping evil and, and light versus dark, and the power of love and knowledge and understanding. and. It uses science in a way that I haven't really seen a kid's book use. It's as if it's explaining scientific concepts that are mostly um, very adult concepts in a way that children can understand them, not only by simplifying them, but for explaining them as though the reader, which it's, you know, aimed at ages 12 to 16, can understand highly complex topics without being patronizing or, or talking down to them at all. One of the characters, Charles Wallace, is only like four years old, but he's one of the most intricate, uh, complex characters in the book. They use illustrations a couple of times to try and explain the concept of time travel and bending dimensions, and I don't know, it, it piqued my interest in a way that a book hasn't in a really long time, and I know I say that a lot, but this book was actually very engaging and very interesting because it merged, um, scientific principles and magic in a way that uses science to explain magic in a way that was logical and interesting and believable so that I got sucked into the story. If you like books about good versus evil and children making hard decisions and witches and strange magical creatures and time travel and space travel and aliens, this is the book for you. It has this overall message against totalitarianism which, because it was written at the height of the Cold War, was obviously very controversial. It also has hints of the upcoming civil rights movement and has really positive messages about equality and quality of life and about choices and decision making. And I think it's a really important book for kids to read, actually. I wish I'd read this when I was 12 or 14 because it gave me a whole new perspective on um, not even like the science versus religion debate, which really I don't want to get into because it doesn't really matter when you're reading this whether or not you are have some kind of religious background or whether or not you believe solely in science or you're not sure. Like this book, it doesn't 
preach to you at all. There's no, you must believe one thing or the other kind of thing. I mean, there's this background kind of idea that there's a higher power, but it's not omnipresent. It's not um, overpowering or oppressive. It's just kind of, you know, there. And if you don't want to see it that way, you don't have to. You can accept the science for what it is. And I found that really interesting. And I haven't seen that in a book. And I'm a huge science fiction nut, so usually I don't go for things that are like religion based. But this time travel book was super interesting and I really want to read the rest of the books in the series because I love the characters and I love the concepts and I, I want to know what happens next. The book was certainly well written and I love the names of the characters and the places and it all seemed very natural and organic and it seemed, the story seemed to grow um, fairly quickly because it's a short book. But it worked and it grew and I kind of learned, underst got understanding from it the story kind of was a logical conclusion and although it ended kind of fast which I wasn't really happy of I wish there'd been more explanation at the end um, I did really like it and I think that this was wonderfully written and I don't know just really good so while this is a kids book I highly recommend that you read it because it's got all these really neat perspectives in it and I just I don't know I liked it a lot Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine Lengel. It's L apostrophe E N G L E. Lengel. Bye.